and welcome to Holy Trinity Parish. Today we are celebrating the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please make sure your cell phone is in the silent or off mode. Please stand as we begin our celebration of the Eucharist and join us in singing your opening hymn, number 850. All are welcome, number 850. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thanks. 
Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in the flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretch out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, it leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your, vain is, your faith is vain, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiful, pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they, ex when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your, your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the, pro the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Sadness is looking at ourselves. Happiness is looking towards God. Sadness is looking at ourselves only. Happiness is looking towards God. Those are words of a 15-year-old, Carlo Acutis. Anyone know of Carlo Acutis? should say, Blessed Carlo Acutis. He was beatified, died in 2006, 
age of 15, beatified already in 2020, well on his way to being canonized a saint. The homework assignment this week is to look him up on the internet. You can see pictures of him. He looks just like any other young person his age, just enjoying life. The very simple life, but extraordinary and inspiring life. He was born in 1991 in London, but then his parents and he returned soon to their native Milan in northern Italy. And he was drawn to the Lord, relationship with the Lord at a very early age, even though his parents were not that religious. After his first communion, for example, he rarely missed attending daily Mass, not just weekly Mass, but daily Mass. Prayed the rosary frequently, went to confession regularly, and he had a he was uh, gifted with working with computers. And so before he died, he had developed a website which cataloged all of the Eucharistic miracles that have taken place in the church's history. He had a deep devotion to Christ in the Eucharist. In fact, he would say, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven. He said, the more Eucharist we receive, the more we become like Christ. The Eucharist is my highway to heaven. He came down with leukemia. The beautiful thing is that he offered his suffering for the Pope and for the Church. Again, died in 2006 at the age of 15. I'd like to share with you two other quotes of his that show something of his character, his sanctity, and just the beautiful way that he was responding, even at that age, responding to the Lord's powerful work in his life. He said this, to always be close to Jesus, that's my life's plan. I'm happy to die because I've lived my life without wasting even a minute of it, doing things that would not have pleased God. He said, our aim has to be the infinite and not the finite. The infinite is our homeland. We have always been expected in heaven. To always be close to Jesus, that's my life's plan. And I was struck with this other quote with which I began. Sadness, he said, is looking at ourselves. Happiness is looking towards God. See, in those 15 years, he gained a great deal of wisdom. And that quote alone summarizes well our readings today. Jesus, our risen Lord, is reminding us once again of the two ways. Heard in our first reading from Jeremiah. Cursed, cursed is the one whose heart turns away from the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. We heard in our responsorial psalm. It's Psalm 1. The psalms begin with this, these two ways. The Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. And we see it very clearly in our gospel today. Jesus gives those blessings. Blessed are you. And then the woes, the blessings and the woes, the two ways. Pointing out that, he's pointing out very straightforwardly that there's only two ways. There's no middle way. And the choice is ours. But he wants us to know what the consequences are of our choice. Where each, he wants us to know where each way ultimately leads. So Blessed Carlo Acutis summarizes it well. 
Sadness is looking at ourselves. Happiness is looking towards God. Or if you want to put it even more succinctly, it's one of my favorite quotes from the Catechism. They quote St. Thomas Aquinas, and it's three words. God alone satisfies. God alone satisfies. If we get that, everything else in our lives falls in place. He needs to be first. God alone satisfies. We need to place our complete trust. We need to rely completely upon him. It's always a challenge. But you see how much the Lord loves us? He wants us to be with him in heaven for all the eternity. And here again, he's showing us the way and showing us which way to avoid. The saints saw this. The saints saw the two ways and they followed him. And they show us that it's possible to live this way that leads to him. There's suffering involved, of course, but ultimately it leads to happiness. And they're praying for us. The saints, along with blessed Carlo Acutis, are continually praying for us that, they will, that we will indeed find our way to heaven as well, where we will experience happiness, true happiness, sheer joy, and a bliss beyond imagining. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and confidence, let us place our needs and petitions before our loving Father. For the Church, may the Lord strengthen her in her mission to be a beacon of hope for the world. For this, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, May the Holy Spirit fill their hearts and minds with a thirst for righteousness. For this, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in difficult situations, may God strengthen them through trials and comfort them in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. 
The Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may God create in each one of us a contrite spirit that is pleasing to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who's called to follow Jesus in the priesthood or consecrated life will allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen them each day in their vocation. For this, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom by the communion of saints. And for Sandra Foster, the intention of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we come before you as your children, seeking your answer to our needs through Christ our Lord. Our preparation hymn is number 683. Be not afraid, number 683. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal 
to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, we, therefore O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain 
and inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of Lord, do always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
while we share the Eucharist, sing with us number 592. We are the light of the world, number 592.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those that do want to look up uh, Blessed Carlo Acutis, I forgot to spell out his last name. His last name is spelled A C U T I S, Blessed Carlo Acutis from uh, Italy. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our concluding hymn is number 766, City of God, number 766. <laughs> Absolutely. 